Hi everybody, thanks for joining us again today for another, another interview with a health and safety peer. I'm joined today by Teresa Higgins, she's Brand Director for Barber EHS. So thanks for coming along today, Teresa. My um, pleasure, thank you for having me, Matt. No, no problem. I know Teresa a little bit, so it's going to be great talking to a, to, talking to a friend um, and maybe learning a little bit about her and certainly garnering her views on some of the issues which are um, challenging us today. So Teresa, rather than me talking through your, your bio, perhaps you can give us a little bit of background um, about yourself, about how you came into the position you're in. I know you've been involved with Barber for, for a number of years, so please. I will, thank you very much. Um, fell into Barber, I actually was um, by profession a tennis coach, so nothing to do with sales, nothing to do with health and safety, but actually quite interesting all about people. So I learned at an early age to um, work with people, to train people, because I was quite young, so I was teaching grown-ups and grown-ups, adults, <laughs> and had to have that that um, that buy into people. So I learned how to get from people possibly from my tennis coaching days, perhaps. Um, fell into sales. Um, it was just, I was just going to take it as a part-time extra because with, in England, tennis coaching, you didn't really earn a great deal of money. So it was always evenings and weekends. Um, so I looked for a proper job and uh, fell into to Barber, really, back in the good old days of microfiche. Started off in sales, 15 years with sales, um, left a couple of times, came back a couple of times and got done teleappointing for them. Um, and, and then just sort of the Heather Beach called me and said, can you come back? And came back as the sales manager again for the second time and worked my up to brand director. So um, it's been a really lovely journey with Barbara, to be fair. And I, I 30 years in total, I think. So clearly I was very young when I started at Matthew. Yeah, very, very young. Yeah, absolutely. So do, what, what? tell us a little bit about what Barbara do then, Barbara EHS do, you know, not to be mistaken for the clothing brand, of course. No, unfortunately not, because it's been in freeze, especially walking the dogs first thing in the morning. Um, it's really interesting. We've evolved. But when people say, who are Barbara? They've always known us from the reference library, putting together all the legalese, the legislation and, and all the documents, the documents library and 60 years worth of content, which we have, of course. Um, but actually, interestingly enough, people now have asked for handholding tools and things to make sense of the legislation. So we've evolved and we're constantly evolving. And it is um, more, I hate that term, one stop shop. Yeah, it really is. I know it's really cheesy, but um, but it pulls together. All health and safety, all environment, facilities, HR, all under one website, um, library and how-to tools. Well, that brings me really to my first question about the only constant at the minute is constant change. We, you know, we're coming off the back of COVID. We've got in the UK, we've got Brexit to deal with. Our colleagues internationally are going through, you know, certainly tumultuous times with oil prices and all the rest of it. Yeah. How do you stay abreast of... Um, of change and the pace of change. How do you keep your resources up to date? I mean, it's a it's a constant issue for for EHS professionals. And, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I've got I've got a great team actually. Um, it's been and it is all about people. Business is about people, isn't it? And uh, they have been working flat out. Um, I have been trying to convince them not to, but they're so passionate about the content, health and safety. Um, there was a couple of changes on Saturday. One of my editorials team actually had some updates on Saturday and, and, and updated the service. It's constant. Um, they have got a passion, but they are going through all the websites, um, putting together government reports, um, legislation, European directives, wherever they can find them. It's a constant. I was looking, I was just checking actually before we came on. And, do you know, there's been 75 pieces of legislation and amendments since COVID began, just for England. That's not Scotland or Wales or Ireland, 75 pieces. Yeah, wow. Incredible. And actually you make it, because I, I know I write in quite a formal style. So there's a real talent between getting what can be incredibly dry and turn it into quite accessible language, which is yeah. still, still technically correct. I mean, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a school job in itself just doing that, isn't it? It's, it's that's really one of the things that I'm I'm really proud of is that what my, my editor Lisa Lewington she is so she is so keen on no interpretation because legislation you know better than I do Matthew is open to interpretation so yeah. it, it's so great it's so willy um, and it's really important to write anything that any of our resources any summaries really factually so that it isn't our, inter our interpretation our opinion because our opinion might not be our client's opinion mm -hmm have to really summarize it to make sense give people the facts but with no spin something we're really proud of within nebosh is is how um 
our our diplomates, our certificate learners, the people who have undertaken the mm-hmm. and, and we're still in touch with, have really sort of stepped up to the plate during during COVID and, and they've really proved their value, you know, so that, that enabler, that kind of approach we've been pushing for years and years and years. Yeah. As a profession. Do you think we're going to be able to, to as a EHS profession, are we still going to be able to maintain that kind of importance within organisations post-COVID, do you think? And, and how can we maintain that that sort of visibility do you know it's incredible isn't it because we were always seen as oh health and safety you know the the the, the safest way is never the cheapest way or the quickest way you know let's not do it and it was always a, a blocker rather than enabler but covid suddenly that the whole company stopped suddenly they can't actually reoperate without having the health and safety in place all the correct p- procedures yep. and it's really interesting that I think businesses have suddenly realised how important people are and that the business can't operate without the people buying, the right people, the right commitment, the right safety of the people. So suddenly a professional's right up there, as you said. Um, so we can look at this as an opportunity because a lot of my clients that I've been talking to, suddenly the profile's been raised four or five levels, you know, CEO, the CEO, right, okay. um, which has been brilliant. And it's so... It's so reward. I just, I feel honestly, I'm so pleased for, for the for the profession. But I think what we need to do now is perhaps use the opportunity to crowbar some day to day health and safety normal stuff in, so that it already embeds. We keep embedded in the board of directors, so it doesn't just COVID. Great COVID. That's another tick in the box. You've done that. We can crack on. And it, I think it's just weaving. Yeah, you know, your things that you want be your KPIs for the next year. You know, we want to do this. We want to do that. Don't. While you're up there, cram in all your day-to-day stuff. Yeah, no, I think that's good advice. That makes sense. What do you think? Do you think that makes sense? It does. I think while you've got a profile, while you while you've got that visibility, while you've got people's ears, take yeah. advantage of it. If there's something that you particularly want to do, or you want an initiative, or something that's not getting the airtime you want, grab yeah. the opportunity. Yeah. It's, it's it's actually seeing the right benefit to the right director because they're yeah. Drivers for a company, so it's actually uh, we've got to get a bit astute and put a bit of a sales hat on and say, okay, how can we stay up there? What's important? What does the business want from health and safety for the next few years? Now, yeah. is, is it winning more business, and can we take accreditations to enable us to win more tenders because more clients are asking for accreditations and things, or is it actually getting more revenue or more uh, output from our staff and in that case a happy workforce as we said earlier will perhaps work harder be more committed go above and beyond but that's we can do that ourselves we as managers health and safety professionals and empowering our management team we can actually try and get the workforce to engage with being happy and productive health has this increased prior um priority at the moment you know we can kid ourselves that you know it's a nice balance health and safety and we've known for years haven't we that it's actually a large s and a small h and all that stuff <laughs> do you think do you think do you think now now is the time where health is going to get more more of a profile than ever before in the future or yeah i think i think it, it was amazing i think it was only mm, six or seven years ago i sat in a, a room full of health and safety professionals and somebody put their hand up and said you know how many of you specialize in in uh, in the safety side yeah and how many in health and i think it was two people in the room of 100 people that did um that knew anything or even focused on the health side um, but there's been so much isn't there and i think with covid now anxiety stress i think people are more aware of how they should be feeling different issues and i think to be able to deal with that companies then have to get ahead of that don't they and, and, and try and engage and understand and it's really it's it's really difficult because we're going to have to learn another set of skills it, again the sales skills i suppose the, the questioning the understanding relating to somebody because it's very difficult for anybody to tell you that they're struggling people hate to struggle we're we're survivors we're english we're stiff up a lip no i'm fine so i think safety professionals now with the mental health side have actually got to try and understand it that's first and foremost so that's a different skill set a different a line of questioning isn't it and it still needs to be resolved you know whether that sits in hr or whether it sits in the safe because you know you talk to different organizations to different businesses yeah. in the uk internationally it, sometimes it just it is you're the, right. the, the ehs bit do the, the the front end and then hr step in behind it's still that it's there's not always that working together of, of, of all the departments that needs. And something that's come to light really for me from talking to lots of different organizations over the last, what are we in eight, nine months now of, of, of yeah. COVID um, is that 
people's home circumstances are so different, you know, and, and one size does not fit all. And, and the importance of just good management, actually, you know, you can put in all these controls and paper controls, but actually talk to your people and have those skills and develop those skills in the wider teams. And that's going to be, again, another thing that, that, that we have to get better at in terms of upskilling managers in, in understanding the, the shadow they cast, really, and the positive benefit they can bring. And no, that, I agree. And, and I think you've written some great courses now, haven't you, for Nibosh, because there was a, you know, there, it was a whole new level. People do need to be trained. You would think that people could get it, and but it's, especially in a male environment, a lot of a lot of the construction side is male, and it's yeah. people saying, are you okay? And they say, yeah, and they say, oh, thank God. Right, good, lovely, and move off. But it's actually in your heart, so you know it's, they're not okay. It's then following on with the next question rather than, yep, yeah, tick in the box, I've done that. So I think people do need help. And I, there are organisations like yourselves writing some really good stuff. Yeah. Well, that's a nice segue. We've got a new um, wellbeing, uh, working with wellbeing qualifications coming out, coming out very shortly, actually. Um, we should probably talk about Brexit then. So how are Barber dealing with it? Because the impact longer term to, to, to the UK in terms of legislation, regulations, the rest of it. I know we're going to adopt and continue with what we've already got, but how do you see the, the impact on the EHS profession? It's just another another research piece, isn't it? I mean, we're dealing with it really, really well because we've had all of the, the legislation there all of the time anyway. So we, we've we always put in regions so because Scotland will be different to Wales, to Ireland, obviously it's completely different again, to England. So we already have the legislation and we already have all the EU Brexit stuff. So um, all we'll do is people will have to decide, you'll know your company, you know, that people are dealing with reach, that's already been done, dusted, they should know yeah. they're dealing with reach, that, you know, that they have a set of um, piece of legislation that there's already out there. And I think from, my, from, from our point of view, the European Commission will keep writing stuff, we will keep putting in the library. Um, Nothing will change dramatically, I don't think, to start with, because if they don't change anything and, the, and, and we've already implemented our information, if we've got a UK site, then it, it is what it is. The only difference will be now is you've got to keep on top of two sets of regulations. You've got to keep an uh, um, update on your UK, whether you're England, Scotland, Wales or Ireland, or not so much Ireland, England, Scotland, Wales. And then you're going to have to keep an eye on the European Commission, because if they change something in Europe and we don't adopt it, are you gonna? You're gonna have to change possibly your how you work for Europe because it's not over in Parliament. So, I think it's another another couple of hours you've got to find a week to research, unless you use Barber, of course. Challenges then for for EHS functions globally. So I'm a I'm I'm somebody based in UAE. I'm somebody based in Republic. I'm exporting. I'm all the rest of it. What, what common challenges do, do your clients come to you with when it when it comes to operating in that in that field? It's really interesting. And again, it's another development. So before our UK clients only wanted UK and they had a company wide best practice and that would then be globally. So they'd use that best practice done across the globe. But over the last like, probably five or six years, our clients are like, I actually it's not enough now, especially 45,000 if they're doing uh, that globally. They need to have the country legislation. So all we've done is we've put together an international library to try and support them, move with them. Um, so we'll put the federal legislation on. Interestingly, though, I've done quite a lot of research and what is really helpful are quick facts. Some key areas for international sites. So we've got all our UK, our UK guy, but he only wants a strategic what's DSE in France as opposed to Germany, as opposed to UAE, doesn't always want to read the legislation. So what we've done is we've stopped and we've just done some research on what do you want? And, and, the, and the quick facts are brilliant. So we've started off with 20 quick facts for the countries. So you can quickly dip into France, DSE, that's what it says, France, India. Actually, there isn't any in India, but you wouldn't know that. No. And, you, and then you keep looking. So what we're now going to do with the, with the research is put a matrix instead of things topic driven. So because from a strategic point of view, if you don't want... We've got all the legislation in there, but you just want a quick in. And I think that's how people are looking to deal with it. A quick, tell me if it's different. This is what I need to do. I've got my best practice, but I just need to slot that in for France. That's all I need. Chuck it in. Um, and then, of course, we've got bookmarking to keep up to date. So, um, so again, I think that was a bit waffly, but yeah. it's, it's not knowing the answer. It's knowing where to get to it quickly. And, and what do you actually need? 
No, it wasn't waffling at all, Teresa. It's my job to waffle. Um, I mean, what, one thing that I get to do, one of the best things I might, so I'm, I'm, I'm head of, of, of learning and partnerships at Nebush. So I speak to people all the time. It's great, you know, so I, I, and it's my job to hopefully find out what it is that people want in terms of a product or a qualification or, or whatever it may be. How do you know what it is that, that the EHS profession want? How, how do you decide what to put on your, on your portal? No, it's brilliant. We, we just, I, I love talking to people. So we do surveys. Don't you worry, our customers are not forward in coming back. Backwards and forward. <laughs> Honestly, it's like, oh, why have you got this? Could we do that? So, so it, that's how we develop because at the end of the day, we want it to be a, a tool for our professionals. I, I'm not going to use it. it. It has to be fit for purpose. So we are constantly evolving right from microfiche days to CD, to internet, to the library now the resources now to international now to legal we've just done a whole survey on legal legal registers because that's a huge can of worms on updates amendments what they need different auditors doing different bits so the bottom line is most important thing for me is our clients just keep working with them the, the sure thing is our service will be completely different in two years time than it is today because your role will be completely different in two yeah. years yeah, it evolves, doesn't it? And that's it. That's what it's set out with our mindset. That's why I love it. That's why I've been doing it for 30 years, because, you know, it isn't just, there is always something else on the horizon. So you've spoken to your customers, your clients. What are going to be the um, emerging trends then that we need to be aware of? Or what's, what's other than Brexit and the C word, COVID, what are the things which people are asking for at the moment? It is that the legal registers and accreditations are huge. Okay. Um, just how to manage them, how to stay on top. How, what's they need in them in the first place? So that's 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 a huge area for us. Environmental is is always a big one because it's it is so complex. So it's really, I think, diff, the whole principle is how can I make your lives easier? So there are all sorts of topics always coming out. There's always the next hot topic, but how can we address all of them and make it oh, okay. learning curve quickly? I think is is kind of where we focus on yeah i mean I, I would say i've got access to to barber index and just having that assurance that i can get something sense checked quite quickly is a really nice thing thing to have yeah. so we've done enough plugging of barber ehs now so yeah. i'm going to talk about nebosh nebosh qualifications Nibosh. and 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 actually you're fresh off the back of of doing the national general certificate anyway <laughs> i think you've just done the second open book exam so you haven't had your results yet so um you know no, I don't have my results i'm happy <laughs> <laughs> I'm blissful ignorance at the moment <laughs> what, what, why did you decide to do the national general uh just nebosh is just so respected it's quite incredible when you say to you, when you say to your, your clients you know what you what you are to, it's like what well, i'm doing my nebosh it isn't i'm doing a certificate you know nebosh is just for me i'm doing my nebosh so yeah. that's it um, and I did a lot of research as to what to do, which ones to do. And I was amazed at how many you did do. Just mm. an incredible amount of courses. So all well, congratulations to you. It, it, again, it, it, it's great that you've listened and you give people the different support that they need for them. Um, did it all on my own, Teresa. Did it all on my own with a small <laughs> house and 120 colleagues. Well um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but for me, it was just, I've been doing it for such a long time, 30 years, and I didn't feel that I had the credibility to, because, right. because, you know, brand awareness and marketing is always going, oh, go out there, go and chat, go and chat to people. And even in events, it's really odd, you know, even though I'm a salesperson, I used to hate to go up because I used to think, well, what does she know? She's a salesperson. And I don't want to be a salesperson. You know, I, I actually really enjoy the health and safety profession. I don't want to sell anything. I only want to provide a product that supports the, the, the industry. Yeah. That makes sense. So um, I thought I'd get a bit more credibility, a bit more confidence. Don't tell anybody that I haven't got any confidence. Any more confidence, blimey. What are we going to do with that? I was going to say, God, really? Um, <laughs> it is confident. It just is, you know. What do you, mean? Cool. you don't have the right to talk about anything. So I just thought by doing it, um, it would give me a bit more credibility, I suppose. Yeah. And you did like, you know, you do, you know, well, thanks for that, Frank answer. I mean, I've, you are credible. Obviously, you know a lot. You know a lot. We all know a lot, don't we, when we start talking to anyone yeah. about health and safety. But you did, I think you did live online, which, you know, uh, is, has become increasingly more 
popular doing it via i assume you yeah. zoom yeah uh, um and i think you, so how did you find that did you find it was it was it exhausting doing it that way did it work really well for you because it's here to stay i'm convinced of that no no I, I absolutely i agree that it, it, it do you know what it was probably easier doing there because i was going to go hammers i was going to i was booked into it in hammersmith and i live in crowborough so it would have been a really long day getting across yeah. up, getting across london and 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 doing it that way um so it, it was great. The online, the tutor was great. I, I really enjoyed it because you could do it mm. and, and learn a lot. And actually, you weren't so tired at the end of the day from, tra- from me for traveling. Um, it was exhausting because I haven't done exams for ages. So it's that whole, oh, my God, you know, yeah. thing goes in here and loads of things come back out there, you know. So I had to try and plug that bit and, <laughs> in for a couple of weeks. And uh, so the actual exam, um, yeah, was was other people would find it more easier because they were health and safety professionals i'm not a health and safety professional trying to un- understand from my knowledge yeah. how to present something so i it was just slightly bit more complex but it you know it was it was good i enjoyed the online so did you still manage to have those sort of off conversation side conversations were you in breakout rooms or or you know was, was there still some lively debate on the on the, on yeah, the- yeah 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 well like you know it was just like we are now but we're all we're all on the, the zoom yeah. thing and you know it was it probably more engaging because nobody could fall asleep at the back of the classroom. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a good point. Oh, you video. oh my video's not working today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're on camera. Yes, of course we're sitting here nicely. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, and oh, that had a good as well, so it was good. Well, good luck with your exam results. I know you said you 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 know doing the open book was um you were you were scratching your head and you you know really getting into it. So. Uh, Wish you all the luck. I guess your results will thank be due you. sort of February time, um, January, February, I guess. So yeah, um, I'm, I'm, sure you'll, I'm, I'm sure you'll be, I'm sure you'll be great. But um, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, no, I haven't gotten my results yet if I do hideously. No, no, they, no, I can't stand where they, where they are. <laughs> <laughs> Lost in the post. Lost in the post. Um, I think we're probably about there then because we I say I could talk to you for, forever, Teresa, but what's your plans then for the next 12 months? Yeah. My main focus for the next few months is certainly le- developing the legal registers because people are really struggling not struggling it's just really complex yeah. different different things so we've just done a survey uh, it's come back it's really interesting the results we've got legal registers we've, we've got more that i just want to make sure that we develop them to make them even simpler even easier yeah. uh, then a matrix for international always adding more countries um, keeping on top of Brexit, I just need to find out how people want us to present Brexit updates because we've got all that there. Our clients are all, I'm sorry, our editors are always writing resources. So there's always topics. I mean, they've, there is always another topic that they'll write a director's briefing on or employee fact sheet or a toolbox talk or a model policy. And because we've had GDPR, haven't we? We've had COVID, we've had, you know, they've done so many different resources. So um, the only thing that, that won't happen is that we won't be doing nothing yeah it, no. something um um and who knows you know in six months time th- there'll be something different on the horizon for my professionals so it is a constant survey a constant chat a constant development so but certainly legal registers international topic matrix uh, brexit keeping on top of covid is is enough for next week yeah yeah that's keep you busy for the next the next four or five days won't it i'm sure Hey Teresa, it's been fantastic talking to you uh, as always. I'm sure you you welcome people uh, contacting you through. Uh, please do, please do. So Teresa Teresa Higgins Barber EHS, you can find her on on um, on, on LinkedIn as as business where we all go these days. Yeah, I'm sorry, we'll be seeing you at a conference anytime soon. No, yeah, boo. Uh, lots of lots of webinars and and, webinars. and stuff. So. Yeah, we're like this for a while yet, aren't we? But it's been great to see you again, and I'm sure. Yeah, lovely. Thanks for catching up. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Matt. Take care.